Well, that was quite an intro. Shout out to Pop. He made that video for me. All righty. Welcome, everyone, to the very first episode of .edu. And uh, this is for the students by a student. And uh, this is the very first episode, so I'm super excited to be presenting this to you. I am a student right now, so I'm going to be graduating next year, and we're going to be talking more about that. Um, but uh, all the opportunities that I have gotten and uh, all the experiences that I've gotten, so many amazing people that I have met, uh, open source community and to be more specific, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has played a very crucial role in that. And that is what this particular show is about. So we're going to be you know, sharing about how you students, or even if you're not a student, if you're a beginner, let's say, and you want to get involved in the community, how you can do that, how you can you know, connect with other people. There are so many amazing resources that the CNCF has provided us. And that is something that we're going to be sharing in this particular talk. So before we get started, see 100 plus people have already joined. Make sure you hit the you know follow button for Twitch so that you don't miss out any any updates of all the other amazing shows that we have. And yeah, let's get started. So let me just quickly share my screen. Believe it or not, I made this PPT today. <laughs> all right. So .edu, your time is now. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kunal. I'm a junior from India. Well. My exams got over last week, so I'm a senior now, I believe. And uh, I'm going to be graduating next year and uh, study computer science and engineering. And I'm from New Delhi, which is the capital of India. So a little bit about me. I'm your friendly neighborhood uh, neighborhood open source dude. Uh, so that's me giving a con conducting a workshop on Docker <laughs> uh, when I was in my sophomore year. And I will talk more about public speaking and how it can help you and how everyone, how basically when I say everyone, I literally mean everyone. It does not matter if you know coding or not. It does not matter if you're a beginner, a pro level coder. Open source is for everyone. And every contribution counts. So yeah, uh, I've been uh, a little bit more of like a, bit, a little bit about me. I've been contributing to open source since my freshman year. So I started contributing to uh, Kubernetes client of Java. And uh, then I did my Google Summer of Code in that. And uh, that's when I realized that when I first saw that particular project, I was like, well, this is a really big project. How am I going to contribute? You know, and now remember that I was in my freshman year. So I was like, you know, I can't do this. You know, this is not going to happen. But that's when the community came in, when I got a few PR merch. Then I realized that if it wasn't for the community, it would have been really difficult for me to you know, actually contribute to these projects. So they were really supportive and you know, nice, and they guided me, for example. So we'll talk more about that later. But that's how my basically open source journey started. And I never looked back. So I started, you know, helping other people as well. So I took part in mentorship programs, uh, started conducting local programming boot camps uh, as a teaching assistant, instructor, uh, conducting workshops across India, Indian colleges. Um, that's when I also, you know, got to meet the Kubernetes community. So went to uh, KubeCon uh, in 2019, which was the last in-person KubeCon, believe it or not, it's been two years. So <laughs> that's pretty much about me. Um, I love teaching and I love playing video games, listening to music. So yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> All right. So my journey with Cloud Native, which is what we are here for. So how did I decide, you know, a student right from the freshman year, never heard about Kubernetes, never heard about Docker. How did I decide that I wanted to contribute to these projects, that I wanted to go in this domain? To be quite frank with you, I only knew Java and a little bit of Maven and stuff like build tools. And uh, I was just one day attending a, an event in my in my city. It was some uh, some open source event, I believe, happening in near my house. So I went over there, and they were speaking about open source and stuff, and they were sharing about all these programs like you know Google Summer of Code, Outreachy, and stuff. So I was like, that looks pretty cool. What is like you know what is open source? Like you have so many big projects, and we'll talk more about that later. 
So basically, I did not have much idea about that. So all I knew was, okay, I attended this workshop, and basically, you know, we have um, such large scale projects that people around the world are using. And that person told me that you can contribute to these projects. I'm like, get out of here. Are you sure I can contribute to these projects? There's Linux kernel or like Kubernetes or, you know, uh, so many other projects. So that is when I realized that they told me a very good thing that open source is everywhere. Even if you're not a developer, you're using it in one way or another. I'm like, how? They were like, well, you use an Android phone. Android has an open source operating system. Uh, for watching videos, I used to you know, use VLC, for example. So that was also open source, Firefox and other, other stuff. Um, so I was like, yeah, it, it need is everywhere. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Then I went home and I, I was like, okay, I only know Java. How am I going to you know, contribute to projects related to Java? So I just went to some website and started Googling about it. That's when I found the Kubernetes Java client by Red Hat Middleware, JWAS community. I was like, okay, this looks, this looks, well, to be quite frank, I was like, well, this is not going to work out <laughs> because that particular project, you can see that project right now as well. It's very big. Um, and I was like, I don't know what Quarkus is. I don't know what Kubernetes is. I don't know what Docker is. What, what am I going to do? So I just went on the mailing list and I was like, hey, I'm a freshman and I just know a bit about Java. I would really love to contribute to your project because I want to learn more. So I was like, yeah, cool. Uh, that sounds good to us. And then they were like, um, they pointed me to some resources. This, they shared about, you know, a little bit about the docs and stuff. Uh, I also started attending a few meetings. So I asked my doubts over there. That's when I started with like good first issues, beginner friendly issues. And um, that's how the complexity grew. And then I did my Google Summer of Code with the same project. And that's how basically my journey started. Believe it or not, my first, uh, my first pull request in that project was deleting a file. So I literally did not do anything. I just deleted a file and opened a pull request. And I initially I thought, well, are they going to take this seriously? And they did. So that sort of like, you know, gave me a little bit motivation that, okay, every contribution counts and you know, the, the work that I'm doing is actually being appreciated. So it does not matter if you're a beginner or not, uh, if there's something that you can do for the community, which we'll talk more about later. So if you're just joining in, uh, I, in, in this particular session, I also definitely want to share some action items with you because that's the you know, best kind of sessions when you have something to follow up after this session. So in the end, I'll be sharing like a few, like seven to eight uh, programs and you know, mentorship programs, internships, and uh, all these other scholarships and stuff that are provided by the CNCF that you can take part in. And I've also personally been a part of these few. Uh, and to be honest, it was really helpful to me. So that is basically how I decided that I wanted to do Kubernetes. Uh, I did not like really decide, decide that. I was like, okay, I'm just looking for Java projects. And I found that. And I then really loved Kubernetes. So then my GSOC mentor also told me like, hey, um, there's this thing called KubeCon. Since you're working with Kubernetes and stuff, you should definitely go check out KubeCon. So then I filled the KubeCon diversity scholarship form. And then I got to meet everyone, like nice, nice people in San Diego uh, in 2019. So that was like one of the best experiences of my life. Oh, by the way, the KubeCon North America virtual, it's free for all the students. So make sure you fill the form. It's on, um, I, I'll share it with the CNCF, uh, CNCF students uh, Twitter handle. So basically I'll share, it has been shared over there. So just you can, you can find that and you can fill the form and you can get a free ticket for the virtual KubeCon North America in October. Alrighty, challenges that I faced. This is a very dramatic picture that I clicked in the you know, in this San Diego port. So I thought it might look cool here. Uh, might be wrong, might not be wrong. You tell me. So let me know in the chat. <laughs> so challenges that I faced as a beginner. Um, right off the bat, I was overwhelmed at first. So basically, um, I was like, you know, the, the thing I mentioned already, looking, uh, taking a very big project and I'm like, you know, how am I going to work with this? And uh, there's this thing called the imposter syndrome that, okay, so many big, big you know, so many advanced and uh, pro level people are working on this project. Like literally, you know, the GitHub looked like a garden. The GitHub, just, the, the map looked like a garden. I'm like, I don't compare with them. I, I, I can't do this. So that was one of the feelings initially that I had. And uh, if you contribute, if you want to contribute to large scale open source projects, often time, uh, this is something that you, I get asked quite a lot, and I'm sure you can relate as well if you have ever looked into a larger project, and that is that the code base is really large. Like, hey, 
scope base is huge where do i start how do i understand the entire thing so all of these questions were in my mind as well i'll go through how i resolve these one by one so asking help very important communication is key in open source so all these big projects you know that are really active they have for example there's you know mailing list and uh, group chats for example slack or gitter or whatever that might be so you can join that you can ask your questions in the public channel uh, no doubt is a you know silly doubt but uh, a tip that i can give you over here is actually two tips first one is that when you're first starting out with a project right so let's say you have picked up a project speaking about picking up a project you can attend meetups for that i'll uh, will also share like the entire we have a really nice nice guest speaker today who's going to be sharing the entire landscape of cncf with you as well and a little bit more about uh, the cncf glossary so that will make things more clear regarding how to actually find projects but let's imagine you have found a project then uh, first of all communication is key make sure you inter- you know join the mailing list and the slack channel and whatever and uh, before actually contributing you can you know try to use that project as a user so you find it difficult to contribute to if you do if you don't know what the project does um so try to use it if you if you face any questions uh, you know if you face any issues if you have any questions ask those in the public channel and uh, try to set it up on your local system try to run all the test cases these are the few ways which by which you can get started second point uh, look for the beginner friendly issues now beginner friendly issues are basically uh, you know issues that not many people are that that are like relatively easy to solve uh, if you are not able to find good first issues in the github issues tab so it will be like low hanging fruit or something difficulty easy or something you can just filter out with the tags if you are not able to find that you can just go on to the slack channel or whatever and you can say hey i'm a newcomer can you maybe suggest me some beginner friendly issues so shout out to the kids community there's a in dev channel over there dims and everyone they share regularly they share kubernetes beginner friendly issues So I would highly recommend joining that in case you are interested in contributing to Kubernetes. It's a very nice resource, and they also help you a lot in getting started, which we'll talk more about later on. So you will definitely face face these you know challenges if you are a beginner, like you know first time you're looking at a very big project. But I believe the imposter syndrome thing. This is what I'm going to end this slide with. It does not mean that. See, imposter syndrome does not mean that I don't know anything. Okay, this is a very important point for you all. Imposter syndrome means that I know something else, and they are working on something else. So to sum up, if you find yourself in a place where you um, don't know much about a particular project and you're a student, let's say, then it's a good thing. Okay, take it as a positive thing. Now you're asking me, Kunal, why? Well, because you'll get to learn a lot, and you'll also get to contribute. So win-win, right? Imagine you're contributing to just one single. a uh, project that let's say you're a student and you're just contributing to very basic project that is actually let's say no one is using and it's like not even no one is actually using that and it's not even that complex and you're not basically learning anything new so are you really go- growing as compared to as much you could grow if you were working you were working on a, like a real world project that say kubernetes prometheus thanos all the other cncf projects or even let's say not cncf projects other open source projects you know so If you, if you face these challenges you are on the right track so you have a great learning opportunity ahead of you and uh, the community is there to help you that rhymed i can rhyme as well <laughs> all right so community to the rescue i mentioned this already uh, this is a picture of the uh, all the scholarship winners and everyone in north america 2019 so basically whenever you get stuck uh, this is another important point how to ask questions right so before asking the question Google is your friend so try to google that error and if you are not able to resolve that then just go to the public channel ask in the public channel i don't like send dm to everyone imagine if 100 students wanted to contribute to a project and all the 100 students started you know sending a dm to the uh, mm. to the maintainer so that would not be good <laughs> so basically ask your question in the public channel and that is going to help you as well because more people will see your message hence your doubts will get resolved very fast last point over here is ask good questions so basically um yeah so ask good questions so basically don't just say hey uh i'm not able to understand this actually put out some resources like hey this is what i'm trying to do this is the error that i'm facing and this is how i resolve this can you maybe suggest me how i can get started so now the person actually has enough context so basically help them help you okay just give me a second
All right. So what is open source? So open source is basically uh, there are a few licenses to projects, right? So depending on the licenses, it may be free, it may not be free. Uh, but the code is like available on GitHub, for example, free as into you know access for modifying. So it said open source is an uh, like a, Android is a, let's say an open source operating system, but many other companies are using that. For example, let's say Linux is an open source kernel, and we have so many operating systems and you know distros that use it under the hood. Um, so that is. You know, basically the idea that uh, according to the license, may be free to use, may not be free to use, but free as in to access, to modify, and a good open source community. It's basically like inclusive, free as in for anywhere, and uh, people can contribute, they can modify it. And uh, one more thing I would like to mention over here is that it uh, a good open source community is an inclusive community. So basically, every contribution counts. If you check out the Kubernetes community days, it's like spread across the world. So you have KCD, you know, Bangalore, and Africa and in North America and all these other regions around the world. So basically, that's the uh, idea. That uh, for for you as a student, the the best part about open source is like the cooperation and the community because you're gonna get to learn a lot. All right. So that was quite a lot of information. Um, I'll be answering a few live questions as well. So make sure you send all your questions in the chat and also make sure you give the follow to the uh, give a follow to the. Twitter, uh, sorry, not Twitter. Um, if you could do Twitter as well, that'd be great. But make sure you follow the Twitch channel. It's a button right here somewhere. Follow. And uh, so that you will be notified of all the amazing streams. You can also see the schedule over there, right? So all the, uh, so we have like so many nice, amazing shows. So ed .edu is one of the shows. We have so many other amazing shows that you saw in the introduction. All right. So what is CNCF? So as you can see over here, uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is a Linux Foundation project that was founded in 2015 to help advance container technology and align the tech industry around its evolution. So containers are basically, you know, you, uh, let's say your application are running in isolated environments. Maybe in the future we'll do like another workshop on that. But you might be, you might have heard about like virtual machines. So containers, for example, it's not a this or that question like containerization versus virtualization. Uh, this is not like a technical talk right now. So maybe we'll have a separate one on that later. And I would also recommend checking out all the other shows that have covered you know, such content related to more technical stuff. So basically it's uh, focused on you know, container technology in the cloud. And uh, it also serves uh, as a vendor natural home for many of the projects, which is something we'll talk about next. So, so many open source projects are, uh, you know, un come under the CNCF. So you might've heard about like Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, Anos, Envoy, you know, uh, so many other projects. So speaking of projects, we have a really amazing guest speaker with us, Catherine. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and uh, add Catherine to the show. Hey, Catherine, how's it going? Hey, um, very good. Thanks thanks for inviting me, Kunal. Thanks a lot for joining. I really appreciate it. When I first saw the CNCF landscape, I was like, what is that? It's like, you know, you have played that game called Where's Waldo? So we could do that with the... <laughs> the cncf landscape like where's this project find it <laughs> in the puzzle so yeah. basically uh that is what you know catherine is going to be speaking about so uh we're going to be going through like uh, all the you know like what are the, what is the domain look like what is the glossary so for example you might as a student you might feel overwhelmed listening to these big terms like we just saw one right container so many people who might not know about containers be like dude what are you speaking about you said this was a beginner stock and you're speaking about all these big, big terms. <laughs> so thanks a lot for joining, Catherine. Uh, before we get started, would you like to tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm Catherine Paganini. I am the head of marketing and community at Buoyant. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the creator of Linkerd, uh, uh, mm -hmm. one of the CNCF projects. Uh, I am also the co-chair of the Business Value Subcommittee, uh, and that's the um, group that created the glossary. And just because you we were talking about like uh, students uh, participating and so on, we actually have uh, a Linkerd maintainer, his name is Tarun from India, who started as a student, right? Like he was a student, um, he started getting involved, he um, contributed to the project and we hired him. So that is also, uh, I mean, of course that's like the perfect path, <laughs> but mm. it is a real, uh, it is a real path. Like, so it's not only yeah. um, for learning, but it can actually become mm. a career. So very much in line of what you're saying. So uh, yeah, get involved. <laughs> yeah, most um, definitely. And shout, mm -hmm. shout out to Tarun. I, I know him as well. And he has okay. been done, doing some good sessions with CNCF students. I can give you so many names. There's like Nabarun. There was, I believe, Nikita, who was a GSOC student. 
and uh, you know so many amazing people who are now let's say maintainers of these projects that they were first mentees so make sure you stay till the end of this workshop and this uh, session because i'll be sharing about all these mentorship programs and resources that you can also do because we are, we were also beginners once right and we utilize these resources that cncf provides so catherine uh, all yours maybe you can start by sharing the screen and explaining about the glossary and landscape to the students sure okay let me share okay let me know when you can see my screen i believe it's uh, visible Okay, so, uh, well, first of all, like a little bit what it is, right? Like, so this yeah. is a, so if this you could, is- Yeah, just just before we get started, if you could zoom in a little bit, that'd be great. Mm, yep, oops. Uh, uh, oh, hold on. Why don't we just do this? Oh, this was too much. My computer is kind of going a little slow right now. Um, is that fine? Yeah, it okay. looks good to me. Uh, okay, great. So first of all, like, what is it? So the CNCF, as you may know, has like different groups um, that create like different projects. So the business um, value subcommittee is one group that wants to create content around business value, but also educating people on cloud native technologies, specifically people who are just getting started, right? Uh, and so um, the glossary is the first project that we created. And it has two goals. First of all, uh, create, um, well, agree on definitions. People sometimes talk about different technologies in different ways. Uh, so we wanna really make sure that we are all talking about the same thing at same in the same way. And uh, the other uh, goal is explaining it in a way that is very easy to understand, even for people who are not uh, technical. Um, and why is that so important? Um, cloud, I mean, as you probably have, uh, realized cloud native um, adoption has really skyrocketed um, and business people too need to understand what it is so they can actually talk to their engineering team. Um, so that's basically why we're creating this and uh, we first, uh, and so you can find it here on GitHub. Uh, we first launched uh, a PDF uh, for KubeCon EU. Uh, so you can see it here with 25 terms, so you can see and download it here. Um, you see um, here the different terms. And the way we basically um, um, break it down each term into what it is, the problem it addresses, and how it helps. Uh, and that is, yeah, the first thing that we created. And now for um, KubeCon North America, we want to create a dynamic uh, website that basically feeds from this repository. Um, so if you want to participate, and this is like a, a, an easy way to contribute to the CNC, uh, to, to a CNCF project, you don't even need to be a coder. <laughs> so um, of course you, you're familiar with GitHub, so you find the issues here, but the best way to see is uh, to go to the project board. So we have here our project board, and you will see here, here are the things that are in review, here are the things that people are already working on, uh, here are the things that are for uh, up for next release. So if you want to work something that we want to press pr or work on tackle next, pick something here. You can also always add an issue of some uh, for something that you think that we should add. It may go into the backlog or we may put it here. But if you want something that gets like addressed fairly quickly, pick one of these. Um, so yeah, I mean, it would be really great if if any uh, one would contribute. I think it's fun. It's a, it's 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 easy to get started, and maybe later once you're familiar with all the terms, uh, um, just join uh, the Linkerd community or any other one. Um, <laughs> a few questions we might a few students might have is actually how do we get started with the contributions in glossary? Yeah, you just uh, you pick uh, one of the issues and you say like you want to contribute, and then we assign it to you. Don't pick more than one. Uh, cause like, uh, you, we don't want people to kind of like block like five terms and then, uh, just, you know, because sometimes, uh, work it in, in the way and you're not able to do that. So pick one, finish that one. Um, there may be like some feedback from the maintainers. Uh, and then once that is done, then pick the next one. Um, any other questions or we can move to the landscape? Uh, there's one more question. So we can see issues over here and projects over here. 
So Rahul is asking, do we check out the issues or the projects? Uh, so this is the project board. So they're all issues, mm -hmm. right? So the project board simply, yep. these are issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is exactly the same thing that's here, yep. right? So all these issues, mm -hmm. uh, we pull them into the board so we can visualize it. I think the board mm -hmm. is something fairly new in GitHub. So yep. maybe not everyone is familiar with it, with it but yep. it's really nice. Oops, it's uh, really nice because you can, you can put the different verticals and then you can see where everything is, whereas here, you see all the issues and you would have to click and you see like, so it, it's really easy to see where, what is, uh, but it's basically, these are all issues. Hmm. Yeah, most definitely. So in project goals, you have like the issues linked mm -hmm. to the, you know, also we can also link like PRs and stuff. So yeah. Alrighty. Thanks a lot for the shout out everyone in the chat. Uh, don't see, we don't see any more questions. So I believe we can move forward. Okay. Now for the main part. <laughs> okay. So I know this is very uh, tiny right now, <laughs> but we have to show the whole thing because I'm, I'm sure you've seen this. It's the CNCF landscape and it's pretty massive. And if you feel overwhelmed, you're probably not alone, right? Because it's like, it's all these little projects. So where do you even get started? But um, once you understand how it's organized, it, it becomes a lot easier to um, navigate it. So, um, let's just have a look of how this works. Uh, first of all, if we have down here, um, service providers and training partners. So th these are companies that help other people adopt um, cloud native technology. So it's not necessarily, um, so it's not technology. So it's not really part of that. They're simply people helping other people. Uh, but we see here four layers and two columns. And these are the ones that are part of the technology ecosystem. Uh, so in the layers, we see uh, provisioning, runtime, orchestration and management, app definition and development. And we're really kind of starting with the infrastructure and moving up the stack up to uh, application tooling. So it's that's how it, is, how it is organized, right? Each of these layers is grouped into different categories, right? So let's let's look at orchestration and management because that's where our famous project Kubernetes is. Uh, so it is part of the scheduling orchestration uh, category. And then you see there are also other projects that do similar things. Uh, then you have orchestration and service discovery, remote procedure call, service proxy, API gateway, and service mesh. And if we go, and maybe let's now, zoom a little in, it's very slow. Okay, um, maybe one more time. Okay, um, so we see all these different boxes, right? And they look different, right? So we see there are white boxes and gray boxes. White means it's an open source project. Gray means it is proprietary. White does not necessarily mean it's a CNCF project. It may just be a company that has an open source project. Then we see big boxes here. The big boxes are CNCF projects and they are not, you can see it here. Um, the, that Helm for instance is a graduated project and build pack is an incubating project. And the CNCF basically has three types of projects, um, sandbox, then incubating and graduated, and that kind of reflects the maturity, right? Like a project starts with uh, as a sandbox project, and then as it matures, it becomes an incubating project. And at some point when the CNCF uh, says it's like a very mature um, project, it becomes graduated. So, but where are the sandbox projects here? It's basically not, there's no way for you to see here, right? You have like, only these two, and then these are either gray or white. Um, so to see sandbox projects, uh, you have to go to the cart mode or just click on this section here to see uh, um, the more information about these projects here. And here you see um, a little bit more information and you see these light blue boxes. And these are, sand, uh, uh, these are the sandbox uh, projects, right? So you have here, uh, these are white, so these are open source as well. But here you see the company that owns them. And here, these are now owned by the CNCF. Here again, you see um, a, um, a graduated project, and this is how the um, incubating projects look like. Um, okay, let's move back. Yeah, 
there's a question maybe we can also you know yeah. go through it briefly like what are sandbox projects what are graduated incubating yeah um i don't know too much to be honest about what how like how where they have to be but like sandbox is really the very first step hmm. uh and um it's not it's probably a little bit of experimentation seeing how um if if they're getting adopters they're not really they're they're that's kind of the first stage, right? And then hmm. I, I am to be honest, I'm not sure what like the, the CNCF has very defined things that yeah. you have to do to become to each next step. So yeah. uh, you'd have to look there. I mean, but it basically hmm. means the higher up, the more mature. Uh, graduated hmm. being like the m most mature uh, phase you can get. Um, yeah, hmm. according yep. to the CNCF. Yep. So it's um, like the entry. It's like the entry point of the project, right? The sandbox. Then you have incubating, and then you have the uh -huh. graduated ones. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and you may have like uh pro like projects here that are uh, from different companies that are still belong to them, and then at some point they donate them to CNCF, and they then they would probably if they're small start as a sandbox. Um, okay, so these are the layers, and then you see suddenly, you know, like if you look at it, this is like, wow, huge. But if you look at it now and you know exactly where you're looking at, you have like a much smaller group. Of, so it becomes a lot easier. Even like here, databases, which has like a lot of tools. I mean, it's, you're looking a lot, lot less um, um, projects and products than if you see the whole landscape, which is pretty overwhelming. Um, okay, so let's look at the columns here. So first, uh, we have observability analysis. And why is this a column? Um, that is because you need to monitor your entire stack, right, across all layers, right? Um, and because it runs across all layers, uh, these tools are a column. Um, Platforms are a little different uh, because they basically bundle together different technologies across these layers into one platform. So they they pre-configure and um, fine tune it, uh, really making it a lot easier for um, companies to adopt cloud native because you could whatever these tools do, you can all do it with these tools, right? Like it's all in here already. But like being able to do that requires a lot of know-how, uh, engineering um, capacity and so on. Not every company has that. So this is like a really nice way to speed up uh, um, cloud native adoption. Um, so yeah, a little different there. So that's basically the cloud native um, um, landscape on a very high level. Thanks a lot for sharing, Catherine. Um, cool. So basically, I don't think there's a single person who knows every single project in the landscape. Is there? <laughs> I don't think so. I would be very I don't impressed. Think so <laughs> yeah, that, that would be very impressive. All right. Cool. Well, uh, thanks a lot for uh, sharing, Catherine. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like to share with the students? No, no, I think just like um, what you said, right? Like it's really important to get involved mm. early on. Yeah. Um, it can become a career. If it doesn't become mm. a career, you're really learning lots of qualifications that are super important. And I think if one thing that the whole COVID thing has done is accelerating the mm. whole work from home, like basically like the whole, it, it's become such a like, we don't have borders anymore, specifically in the, cloud native uh, space. So um, people can work from everywhere. So it's like, it's one thing. Like if you if you become part of the community, if you learn, you know, like if, if, if you learn English too, like English is also like a very important language. Uh, so for all the um, students who come from uh, countries mm. that don't speak English, it mm. is, uh, yeah, it is important to learn that and to, to do, to um, learn mm. the, the skills as well. Mm. And yeah. Just get involved and 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 yeah, yeah. Do most it definitely. Could not, <laughs> yeah, could not okay. agree more. Well, thanks a lot for joining, Catherine. Really, really appreciate you joining, and thanks a lot for sharing all the insights with the students. And uh, yeah, really, really appreciate it. Once again, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Alrighty. So I believe that was a great introduction to the to the you know uh, CNCF landscape. Speaking of which, if you want to learn about what each of these, see, we saw so many projects, right? And you might be, okay, these are so many projects. What, how do we get started? How do I know which project does what? 
So Sayam, uh, who is also you know really good friend of mine, and uh, he he has a playlist and like uh, he also has like his own show uh, in the um, you know the community. But um, there's this uh, playlist that he has called CNCF Minutes. So I've just shared it in the chat, and basically the idea is that uh, explain what a particular project does in as simple language as possible. So in like two minutes and three minutes. So basically, that's uh, the idea. All right. If I'm doing a plug, then check out all the people. See, there in the cloud native world, there are so many amazing people doing great work in the community. So there's Anais and there's you know, Popcast Pop, uh, Rock uh, Rock Academy. I, I forgot the name. Uh, there was some academy. I forgot the name. Anyway, uh, Pop and everyone is in the chat, so maybe they can share all the nice links. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the presentation. Cool. Check out, yeah, Raw Code Academy of David. Nice. Cool. Um, so now to the interest, more like the part that you were waiting for. Here we go. Resources. Interesting part. Like what people, mostly people, I know, get send me the questions for like what are the resources how do we get started etc 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 all righty so first one uh, these are like a few resources in this side that i'm going to share so these are like basically mentorship programs scholarships internships you can be a part of all of these are by cncf and after this i'll also take some live questions so uh, make sure you send me all the questions in the chat so for those of you who are interested in research there's a program by cncf called cross research experience program so it's uh, as you can see on the screen, it provides support for undergraduate and graduate students uh, contributing to the cross incubator projects. And the goal of the program is to uh, you know build the community uh, in terms of like uh, you know the, like the research and uh, you know uh, the basically working with incubator pro cross incubator projects and uh, promoting the uh, research among university students. So basically, you can either be an undergrad student or a graduate student. So one more thing about this is that it's part it's, cross is being announced like in 2021. They're taking part for the very first time. Share all the links in the uh, I'll share all the links in the chat after you know these slides. Uh, the next one is LFX mentorship. This is the one that I was also a part of. So previously it was known as Community Bridge. It's an online internship program by Linux Foundation, and uh, uh, CNCF also takes part in this. So LFX mentorship you can think of it as like uh, GSOC as a service. So if any company wants to, you know, have mentorship programs, they apply to LFX. So for example, CNCF also applies to LFX, and then they, you know, have their uh, projects that, you know, they get started with. So basically, it's uh, developed by Linux Foundation, and uh, it's uh, basically students or mentees get to contribute to open source projects. Um, so in the Cloud Computing Foundation, there's so many, you know, CNCF projects that we just looked into. Few of those take part in this particular mentorship program. Now, what is special about this? Special about this, the special thing about this is that um, you don't have to be a student, right? So if you're not a student, you can still contribute. If you're a working professional, you can still take part. Alrighty. Next is outreach program. So this is basically supporting diversity in type. So CNCF takes part in the outreach program. Uh, for a few hosted projects. These are also like open source projects. For example, Kubernetes has been participating in the outreachy program for a few years now. And uh, yeah, it's a great program. I know some great people who have uh, done this. I was just looking at the stats and I saw Ellen uh, did this in 2017. It's like really nice, uh, you know, um, so many nice people basically on Twitter in the cloud native world. So for example, like there are other people like, you know, we mentioned like Nabaru, Nikita and, you know, uh, Savita and you know, so many other people who were, you know, who started also as like, you know, like students, for example. So outreach is also something you can take part in. And I'll also share the link in the description later on. So similar to GSOC, but uh, I believe around a handful of students are selected. One thing I want to share about all of these programs that is also, this is really important to share. Don't worry about whether you will get selected or not. Okay. So these programs are not like really about, you know, actually getting selected. It's actually about staying with the community after the period is over so they're looking for actually you know these organizations are looking these the, the programs are looking for people who are passionate about open source and not just there for the program so the thing that i would recommend is that um, try to give your best 
try to show interest in the particular project and uh, learn as much as you can build your skills contribute to that project or whichever one you are interested in irrespective of whether you get selected or not and that is the sort of mindset that is going to take you to places so obviously if you are an active open source contributor your application also gets you know enhanced um but uh, the end term motivation should not be like oh i will only contribute if i get selected in these programs no that should not be the motivation motivation should be that i will contribute to these programs irrespectively and i will definitely give my best because you can contribute to these uh, you know cncf projects irrespective of whether you get selected or not so no one is going to say like hey you can't contribute to kubernetes because you're not part because you're not a part of this uh, mentorship program so that is not going to happen it's open to all and everyone can contribute all right um cool so google season of docs this is pe for people who really like contributing to documentation for technical writers so basically um if there's one thing a project cannot get enough of is good documentation so if you're into writing good documentation this is the program for that next one is google summer of the google summer of code everyone knows about this it's been running for the past 16 years i believe and uh, the cncf also takes part in this uh, particular program and uh, yeah a lot of organizations take part around 200 plus and C i believe cncf is one of them so it's a uh, i believe no introduction is required for google summer of code everyone is aware of it but if you are not you can go to the website summer of code with google.com so now some of the menti stats for all of these you know programs that cncf takes part in so for example in 2017 for the you know let's say very first time only eight mentees were there in 2018 also only eight mentees were there around the world in 2019 we see a jump around 20 mentees were there in last year 71 mentees were there from all of these programs and now in 2021 it's like half the cycle we have already 55 i think we're going to cross 100 so i'm going to share the link shortly and then you can go and all the information is given over there timeline how to apply whom to reach out to links to the projects everything you need you can find over there other than that you can join the cncf slack and in the cncf slack there's a mentoring channel so make sure you join that and in the kubernetes slack there's a students channel so make sure you join that the next one is the release team shadows so release team you know basically kubernetes has its own releases right currently 1.22 is going on so um they have the release cycles and uh, in order to train there are few basically release team leads so in order to release the version of kubernetes a lot of people are required in a, in a lot of fields so like communications api documentation you know so many other things so enhancements so basically we need people who can uh, sort of like coordinate all of these tasks so you have like the release team leads and who basically coordinate the entire release process and uh, the shadows are basically people who volunteer to learn more about how a release team lead functions so that for the future releases they can become release team leads currently i'm a release team lead for uh, uh release team not lead sorry i'm a release team shadow for 1.22 for comms so yeah basically learning a lot and uh, working on on documentation and stuff so it's a great learning experience you don't have to know any coding or anything for you know so many like the comms and stuff but uh, you should have definitely you should definitely have the uh open mind to learn and explore the next one is kubecon and cloud native con this is a picture that i took in san diego so you can see thousands of people under one roof i am not sure when we are going to be you know back like this <laughs> and uh, it's fine you know precautions are important um so let's just you know wait all you can do is like waiting but uh, it's a really one of the largest conferences in the world so basically as a student you get a lot of nice resources so you have like the sponsors who whom you can reach out to you can reach out to some amazing speakers you can attend workshops and uh, you can network with a lot of people in in person kubecon there was also like a lot of amazing networking opportunities i met some really nice people got to learn about a lot of nice projects there's also the kubernetes contributor workshops over here like the basic one and the uh, intermediate one not sure if they're doing it right now in you know uh, the next one previously we did used to have so basically if you want to check out the recordings for that kubernetes contributor summit check out that on youtube if you just make a simple youtube search you can find that kubernetes contributor summit and over there you can find the entire process they are explaining about what a sig is how do you be a part of a sig path to known code contributions basically everything is mentioned over there from first starting with a project to getting your pull request merged there's a really nice playlist i'll share that shortly as well but yeah kubecon itself is a vibe uh, it's amazing and uh, the next one is like hybrid so if you are from 
if you're a student so you can definitely attend virtually for free alrighty that was it about my presentation shared a lot of links with you so, so shared a lot of opportunities with you now now let me just share the link real quick and let me just stop my screen sharing it's only going to take a minute uh, just give me a second so it's actually cncf slash mentoring there we go got it so here you go this is the link contains all the programs that i mentioned about right so all the programs that i mentioned about are given in this link all right Cool. So let's now take a few questions. Let me just scroll up a little bit, see if I see any nice questions over here. How can we join the meetings? Sorry for the silly question. It is not a silly question. This is a very valid question. And I also had this doubt, like where are the meeting links? Are they going to magically appear? No. <laughs> so basically, uh, whatever project that you, you are a part of, you can check out their readme file. In the readme file, you can maybe find the link to the mailing list and stuff. Uh, if you join the Google group or something of these projects, most of the time that's the case, then you will automatically get an invite in your uh, in your calendar. At least that's how it happens with Kubernetes. So for other projects, uh, I would recommend directly reaching out on the public channel. Like, hey, I'm a beginner. I would love to attend if you have any you know, weekly meetings or regular meetings. So you can just ask your question. Feel free to ask. All right. You can definitely lower the quality of uh, Twitch in your settings. So yeah, keep the questions coming. Mm. Okay, so many questions. My chat is like going, uh... <laughs> what is the most beginner friendly uh, CNCF project for coding contribution? I would not worry about that. So you should not limit your mind to beginner friendly contributions because even the most biggest projects, the, the most complex projects in CNCF have beginner friendly issues. Kubernetes is one of the largest projects in the world and you have issues that do not even require any coding. How, how much more beginner friendly do you want? <laughs> so definitely you can contribute to large scale open source projects as a beginner is what I'm saying. And once again, if you have just joined, make sure you follow the Twitch, uh, you know, this particular channel, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, so that we can bring you more such amazing, uh, you know, uh, amazing shows. Check out all the other, other amazing shows, shows of CNCF, uh, like the Cloud Native TV. And in the future, basically the future of this uh, uh, talk show, if you like to call it, .edu, is all the programs that I mentioned, all the people that we mentioned, we'll try to get them on the, you know, channel where they can share more in detail experiences about, you know, how they made it. So basically how they got started, what are the struggles they faced, how they, you know, resolved it. So you get to talk to them live and we can also get some mentors. For example, if you're applying to LFX, we can get some mentors over. They can share about, you know, what they look for when you're, you know, when they're selecting mentees, for example. All right. Cool. So make sure you check out the, click the follow button and let's see if there are any other questions. CNCF minutes. Yeah, most definitely check that out. Shout out to Popcast as well. And which open source projects related to app development? So basically you can go to the landscape and you can check out over there. Not really sure off the top of my head uh, if in cloud native, because if we do have that, but I know that many projects are using like front end part. So like React and stuff. So even though it's like cloud-based projects, definitely it's using front-end and stuff as well. So I know Thanos is using React. You can contribute to that. Prometheus is using some. Um, so yeah. All right, any other questions? Any other questions? Um, there are diversity scholarships and uh, there, were, uh, there are a few programs in Linux Foundation that also sponsors the trips for mentees. But again, the end term motivation should be learning and being a contributor. All of these things like, you know, swag and other things, they come on, it on, on its own. So your, your motivation to contributing to these projects should be actually helping the community, being a part and learning, asking questions. And also once you are there, helping others. So once you're already a contributor, help others get started with the contributions. Thanks a lot for the shout out. Really appreciate it. Uh, one more thing I want to share is that uh, 
because I saw this question right now, coding is not the only way to contribute to these projects. So there are non-code contributions. There was a talk, path to non-code contributions. Maybe we can do a session on that later on. Um, so basically, let's say if you're helping someone else contribute, that is an open source contribution. If you found an issue and you're opening up an issue, that is an open source contribution. So you're writing a doc, improving the documentation, that is a valid open source contribution and an important one. If you're reviewing some, if you're reviewing someone else's pull request, that is an open source contribution. If you're conducting a workshop or an event regarding the project, that is also a valid contribution. So basically, coding is not the only way to contribute. You can, you know, do so so much other things. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Matthew McConaughey. Anyway, <laughs> never mind. Uh, yeah, it will be available when the stream ends. All the links I've shared, there was just one link, CNCF organization slash mentoring. So in that folder, in that repository, you can find every single thing that I just mentioned. Thanks a lot for sharing. And yeah, uh, do share about your learnings on uh, Twitter. So you can tag CNCF students, you can tag cloud native TV, and uh, you can also subscribe and, you know, check out the follow, check, follow and uh, like, like basically check out all the future shows because um, the people are here to help you all these other shows. It does not mean that this is the only show for students. That is not what I'm seeing over here. All the other shows are also like you can definitely, you know, get started and uh, definitely attend. And, you know, Sayyam has a great show on certifications. I am a student. I'm going to be graduating next year and I am right now preparing for my certifications. And Sayyam's, uh, you know, the circuit, uh, like the certificate show has helped me quite a lot. So all of these shows are running, uh, you know, regularly. So you can definitely check that out. Anais has her own show that you can check out, you know, a uh, hundred days of like uh, Kubernetes and stuff. So basically really great, amazing resources for people who want to learn more on the technical side. All right. For that, just follow the particular one in the, in the, like the, the Twitch channel, keep applying, keep learning exactly. And everything rest will, everything rest, rest, everything will fall into place. That's correct. Um, all right. Exactly. As a CSE first year student, you can definitely contribute. Yeah. All the recordings will be available. Mm. Kubernetes is a part of CNCF. So it's not a this or that question. Yes, you can join. Check out the non... You can definitely start with non-code contributions. And uh, let me just find the particular video and share with you in the channel. So path to non-code contributions. Oh, actually, I did a one, did one on the CNCF students group. Let me share that. One second. Check out this talk, uh, Path to Non-Code Contributions. Yeah, so Sab Savita and Devya, they have shared from the basics with resources. If you check the description, you can find so many links. The important thing is, see, everyone gets a roadmap, but the thing is, we you need to follow that, right? So all the resources are everything is provided in the link. So make sure you go through that particular talk. Um, all right. Yeah, I am aware of that. <laughs> There's a travel ban going on right now. So uh, that is why to make it more inclusive. See, CNCF is very inclusive. So in order to incorporate that, they have the hybrid model. So you can also attend virtually, which is also pretty cool. All right. There's a, there are a lot of projects. So there are many React projects. I, I know. Yeah. Thanos, Prometheus, other projects. There are also C++ projects. I believe Envoy Proxy is there for people who want to contribute to C++. Yeah, most definitely. We are a family. Any prerequisites? I would recommend um, checking out Sayam's channel. He has some nice resources over there. And also check out, I believe, 100 Days of Kubernetes by Anais. Uh, she has a really nice roadmap. So I think that can really help you. Again, this is just the beginning and we're almost about time over here. So we will be, uh, you know, doing individual sessions on all these topics to go more in depth. Yeah, I believe there's Envoy Proxy and stuff. You can definitely contribute to CNCF projects that are in C++ as well. Okay, any other question? Yep, most definitely. I have something, we have something like in mind and a lot of people are already doing that, you know, in the in the, in the cloud native TV. So that is why, check out uh, just once after this stream or tomorrow, check out all the other shows and what they have to offer. So you can check out on the Twitter. Let me just share the Twitter handle as well of Cloud Native TV. Where is it? Oh, it's Cloud Native TV only. That's nice. So you can follow that and you'll get all the updates. 
it's it will be i believe on uh, youtube and it's definitely going to be on twitch yeah you can uh, you can join the kates calendar by joining a particular sig again if you want to learn more about how to do this i've shared the video link for this as well but just google kubernetes sigs select the sig that you want sig is basically a special interest group and once you do that let me just share with you i'm like googling so much right now <laughs> kubernetes sig uh, so this is the list and in this list you can check out there's a link in every particular table that says mailing list once you join that mailing list you will get an calendar invite automatically in your uh in your calendar mm all right yep there are web development projects I definitely answered that do we need to have good dsa knowledge to join um so the thing is like you don't even need to have coding knowledge in order to get started but since you're talking about code contributions um basics would do but you don't have to be, if you're talking about computer programming then the answer is no most of the projects are written in golang so i would recommend learning golang you can improve the documentation you can write a blog you can you know do all sorts of things like that um so yeah cool um i think you can share your experiences so basically i'm contributing to sig um like there's a marketing team so basically we are doing highlights of various sigs so i recently got my blog published in kubernetes on sig usability so if you want to learn about basically what sig usability does so i wrote a blog for that so that is the same thing that you can do as well ask a lot of questions get involved and don't be overwhelmed try to you know have an open mind and basically just ask a lot of questions i think we answered and sanyam also answered a lot of questions already mm prerequisites one is also already answered thank you for the shout out again for lfx mentorship and other things in particular um see so we shared a lot of resources so i'll we will have like separate sessions on each of these resources but i believe those are all the unique like questions that we had but uh, uh specifically like you're saying java projects golang projects just check out the landscape ones you can you know find it out over there and uh, you know caslin is over here also like shout out to caslin caslin helped me a lot when i was first starting with marketing so yeah just get involved and people will definitely you know um help you out and uh, yeah cool well thanks a lot for joining everyone and i believe that was it for today's session just one last thing you can do anything you can learn anything um all you need to do is ask questions get involved you know google a little bit and uh, yeah that is pretty much about it thanks for joining everyone and we will see you in the next stream which is going to be bi weekly but that is not over um you're going to have so many other nice streams you know Uh, of other cloud native tv shows once again make sure you hit the follow button show show your support and i'll see you in the next one bye